Hey everyone, this is Momoko. Let's learn violin. In this video, I will be going over what to have as a violinist for beginners and also advanced players. So first, I'll start off with the basics. I'll be introducing four items. One, rosin. Two, cloth. Three, shoulder rest and sponge. And four, strings. These items will probably be included with the violin if you purchase in person, but I'm not sure about online. In fact, you, ha you might have to get everything separately. In general, I highly recommend getting the instrument in person. So go to like a local store, any, any place, but just check out the sound yourself, feel the instrument because sound is the most important thing for your violin. First, rosin. So rosins come in different shapes and colors, but you usually start off with this one, a rectangular one with a dark color. You hold it by the wood part and you put the rosin on like this. And you never want to touch the rosin directly because it will become very sticky onto your fingers. When you become an advanced player, you want to purchase the rosin yourself. Um, because these usually come with the violin, um, if the music store was nice enough. Um, so it's pretty inexpensive. But like these, I personally like this circular one with a light color. Um, this was like probably $30. Um, and you hold on to the cloth, sorry, you hold on to the cloth and put the rosin on like that. Next are cloths. Um, cloths are, well, this is just mine, but there's these two. Um, there's specific cloths for the instrument, but you can just use a normal cloth like this. And um, it's for to wipe off the rosin dust from your instrument. So it, it'll it make that kind of sound. Um, but if you normally, um, clean it it won't make that kind of sound it doesn't really make that sound for other strings for me so yay and then you also want to um wipe off this part and also the fingerboard which is the black part i clean my instrument um very frequently so it doesn't really show but um it's very common for beginners to have white rosin dust on the fingerboard or here. And if you leave that there for a long time, it's going to stick and stay there. So you want to be um, watching out and just cleaning. But never put water on the cloth. You only need the cloth. You can wash the cloth, but never put water or any form of liquid onto the cloth and wipe it. You don't need to do that, just cloth. Next up is shoulder rest and sponge. Now beginners usually start off with a sponge. Um, it doesn't have to be uh, this shape or this kind. It can be any sponge as long as it's um, soft. Now you place the sponge under the chin rest. So over here. And then you'll also need two rubber bands, which I don't have with me, but you'll make an X shape to keep the sponge in place. Now, while there are some advanced players who have a sponge, a lot of people use shoulder rest. Now, with this, you just place it like this. It's a little bit hard to see, but um, the fatter side is on the left and it's a little bit more, um, down then the right side and you want to make a smiley face next up strings so when you get the instrument in person you will get it with the strings but inexpensive ones but if it's online you might not have the strings on the instrument and will have to get it separately which is why again i recommend getting the instrument in person for beginners, they will prop. They tend to start with vision, not the titanium, but vision. And then intermediates will tend to use 
dominant. This is what I used up until like a few years ago or something. Um, so I recommend this. Uh, mute. Mutes are very important, especially for orchestra players. Um, and as like the name, um, it's to mute the sound. Um, this is where you normally have it on the instrument. So it's on the instrument, but it's not in use. So let's compare the sound. The sound without the mute. It also rings. Um, and then when you have used the mute, you place it on the bridge. So sound with the mute. It's muted and the ringing is also reduced. Now, these little mutes are, I think, probably about like $2. So get a lot. It's like erasers, even though you have it in the pencil case, for some reason it disappears. I don't know how many times I lost my mute. So I highly recommend getting a bunch. When you become an advanced, you will also need a practice mute. So it's different from this. It's a lot bigger and chunkier um, and it's a lot heavier. And you place it again on the bridge and it mutes a lot more than this. This is for color change. The practice mute is to actually shut down most of the sound but be able to practice in maybe like hotel rooms or like apartments after the quiet hour. I don't have it with me right now, so I can't show, but here's a picture. Next is this. I honestly don't know what this is called, but this is for winter. Um, it's like a tube, but with um, small holes and inside there's a sponge. So whenever you use this, you want to um, put water wipe off the um, outside and then place it inside the hole and try to put everything into the instrument. This way, um, this way it'll keep the instrument like hydrated um, and not dry from the heater and everything. So like this. But you want to take it off when you play. There's also this to humidify um, in the case, it's like humidifying packs, and the brown thing is the cover. You just keep this anywhere in your case. When you become an advanced player, you want two bridges. One for fall and winter, another one for spring and summer. Because the violin breathes once every year, it inhales fall and winter, and it exhales uh, spring and summer, you want one shorter and one taller bridge. Um, so, you know, when it inhales, it's going to expand just slightly. So you want a shorter one. And then when it exhales, you want a taller one. It's just so to keep the height of the sh uh, strings the same. And I say that advanced players would want to just because when you become advanced, you're going to be sensitive to every little thing as possible about the instrument, the sound-wise and also the feeling-wise, which is why you want to keep it the same. But for beginners, it won't really matter, and it's not like it's going to break the instrument if you don't change the bridge, so no worries for beginners. But recommended two bridges for advanced players. So last thing is this. It's to take off um, excessive amount of rosin off your bow hair, or um, it's to balance out the rosin through your bow hair. So sometimes you will put too much rosin on, and when that happens, there's a way of just lightly tapping the tip of your bow to take off the rosin, or I don't recommend this, but whipping, but that's dangerous, so please don't do it. Um, really not recommended and instead of doing that there's this thing where you can see the brushes on the end and so just do this one tip about the bow is that you should get your bow rehaired um every few months if you're an advanced player um or once every 
half a year or a year, depending on how much you practice. But as you can see, my bow is pretty torn and it lost a lot of hair, which is why I will be getting it rehaired very, very soon. Lastly, you want a metronome and a tuner. But these two, um, you can just find it on an app and most of them are free. So yeah, it's just very easy to get. And that'll be it for all the things you want to have as a violinist. Um, I hope it helped and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.